Good evening. Welcome to the California Department of Water Resources virtual public hearing for the Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report. It's 5.30 p.m. and we'll wait for just a couple of minutes to give everyone time to join the meeting. Thank you. It's now 5.32 p.m. and we'll go ahead and get started. Again, this is the virtual public hearing for the Department of Water Resources or DWR Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report or EIR. My name is Pam Chanel and I'll serve as the facilitator today. Thank you for joining. We are interpreting today's hearing into Spanish and Chinese, specifically Cantonese, and I'll walk through how to get into the language channels. And then I'll ask our interpreters to share that information in both Spanish and Cantonese. You can listen to today's hearing in English by staying in this main channel or by joining the English channel. You do this by clicking the interpretation button on your screen and selecting English. If you do not join the English channel, you'll still hear the meeting in English and have an opportunity to make a verbal comment, but you will not hear Spanish or Cantonese comments translated into English. If you would like to listen to the presentation and comments in Spanish, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish. If you would like to listen to the presentation and comments in Cantonese, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select Chinese. Joining us today to provide Spanish translation is Reina Rodriguez. She will now give instructions on how to join the Spanish channel. Hola, muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Reina Rodríguez y mi colega Emilia Rivera. El día de hoy vamos a estar proveyendo interpretación simultánea al español. Si desea escuchar la presentación y los comentarios en español, favor de hacer clic al icono de interpretación abajo de la pantalla y seleccione su opción de lenguaje, en este caso sería español. También le invito a hacer clic en New Original Audio o silenciar el audio original para que de esta manera solamente escuche la reunión en su lenguaje de preferencia. A través de la presentación le invitaremos a someter sus comentarios en español. Si usted planea hacer un comentario verbal el día de hoy, nosotros estaremos aquí para asistir y interpretarlo al inglés. Si desea unirse a la reunión solo por teléfono y no por la plataforma de Zoom para escuchar en español, favor de llamar al número de conferencia en español al... 602-580-9659, seguido por el código de acceso 8833787. Back to you, Pam. Thank you. Also joining us today to provide Cantonese interpretation is Nathan Huang. He will now give instructions on how to join the Cantonese channel. Thank you, Pam. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Huang. 同我们一起提供今天粤语的全译也有专题听 应该是在Zoom的软件的右下方 如果你今天打算自己作出口头的评论而讲的语言是中文的话 Back to you, Pam. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. We'll now open the language channels. We are running this hearing using Zoom webinar, which mutes all participants when not speaking. When it's your turn to make a comment, we'll ask you to unmute your microphone. 
In this webinar, only DWR representatives and I will appear on camera. We are recording and transcribing this hearing. If you would like to turn captions on or off, click the live transcript icon on the bottom of your screen and click the enable option. If you experience technical difficulties today and need to dial into the hearing, the call-in number is 1-833-548-0282. The webinar ID is 848-6149-4062, and the passcode is 027472. This information is in the chat box. If you need to reach a member of the project team for technical support, please contact Delta Conveyance at water.ca.gov. We will conduct this hearing in two parts. First, DWR will provide a brief overview of the Delta Conveyance Project and draft EIR. Then we will have a facilitated comment session for you to provide verbal comments on the draft EIR for the official comment record. There will not be a question and answer session today and DWR will not be answering your comments at this hearing. Your comments will be addressed in the final EIR. If you have questions about how to find information in the draft EIR, email Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Each person will have up to three minutes to make a comment. To allow us to hear from as many people as possible, each person can make one verbal comment today. We will receive as many comments as time allows. If you are not called on to provide a verbal comment today, you may provide a comment in writing, via email or regular mail, or the comment form on the draft EIR website. If you do make a verbal comment today, you can also mail or email additional comments until the close of the comment period. We will share the mail, email, and website address for submitting comments throughout today's meeting. As a reminder, the comment period end date has been extended to December 16th, 2022. All comments are treated equally, whether received verbally, via email, or in writing. Now I would like to introduce Carrie Buckman with DWR. She is the Delta Conveyance Project Environmental Program Manager and will give a short overview presentation. Carrie? Thanks, Pam. I want to start by thanking you for coming to tonight's meeting. We really appreciate that you were taking your time to engage in this process. The last three years have been really hard and have reinforced the need to plan for new climate conditions. While there are multiple potential future scenarios with climate change, climate experts generally agree that we are going to see less snow and more rain over shorter and less predictable durations. As the weather of last year indicates, rainstorms will be flashier, shorter, more intense storms. We also expect more extreme weather events with frequent drought and flood cycles. The goal of the Delta Conveyance Project is to capture water when it is available during high flow periods to potentially store for later use. Adding points of diversion, creating flexibility, helps prepare for changed climate conditions and promotes a more resilient and flexible state water project, or SWP. Our need to prepare for climate change conditions led to the fundamental reason that we are considering this project. We want to consider ways to modernize the aging SWP infrastructure in the Delta to restore and protect the reliability of SWP water deliveries in a cost-effective manner, consistent with the state's water resilience portfolio. DWR, as the owner and operator of the SWP, wants the SWP to be able to continue to function in the face of multiple challenges, 
These challenges are reflected in our objectives. Address sea level rise and climate change. Minimize water supply disruption due to seismic risk. Protect water supply reliability and provide operational flexibility to improve aquatic conditions. CWR issued a notice of preparation on January 15, 2020 to announce the preparation of a draft environmental impact report, or EIR, analyzing the potentially significant impacts of the proposed Delta Conveyance Project. We issued the draft EIR on July 27th of this year. This graphic shows the three main alternatives being considered in the draft EIR, but DWR would only select a single tunnel along one alignment implement if the project moves forward. The draft EIR identifies the Bethany, Bethany Reservoir alternative as the proposed project. This is a different alternative from what was identified in our notice of preparation. As part of the development of the draft EIR, we considered alternatives that may be able to reduce potentially significant impacts and found that the Bethany Reservoir alternative does have the potential to reduce effects. As a result, we changed our proposed project to the Bethany Reservoir alternative in the draft EIR. The Bethany Reservoir alternative includes two intakes on the Sacramento River in the North Delta for a capacity of 6,000 cubic feet per second or CFS. Water would move from the intakes through a single tunnel to the South Delta. The tunnel alignment follows the purple alignment on the figure through most of the Delta near I-5. The tunnel alignment then turns south and follows the orange alignment on the map. At the end of the tunnel, a pump station would lift water from the tunnel up into the existing Bethany Reservoir on the California Aqueduct. The alternatives to the proposed project follow either a central or Eastern alignment and could have capacities ranging from 3,000 CFS to 7,500 CFS. They have one, two, or three intakes in similar locations to the Bethany Reservoir alternative on the Sacramento River. The tunnels connecting the intakes to the South Delta follow different routes. The central alignment moves through the Central Delta, shown with a blue line, and the Eastern alignment follows an alignment closer to I-5, shown with a purple line. At the end of the tunnel, there is a pump station that lifts water to the surface into a southern forebay to regulate flows before they are conveyed to the existing bank's pumping plant. While the figure shows three alignments, each represents a different alternative and DWR would only select one tunnel if the project moves forward. All of the action alternatives would divert water during high flow conditions following a set of operational criteria designed to minimize effects to fish and water quality. The draft EIR also includes a no project alternative that represents likely conditions if the project is not implemented, including reasonably foreseeable changes in existing conditions and potential alternate actions that may be taken absent implementation of the Delta Conveyance Project such as increased conservation, recycling, and desalination. DWR has prepared the draft Delta, or has prepared the Delta Conveyance Project draft DIR to comply with requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. The draft DIR evaluated the effects of the proposed project, examined a range of potentially feasible alternatives that meet the project objectives, and identified mitigation measures to avoid or lessen significant impacts on the physical environment. We are here to listen to comments so we can work to disclose impacts and mitigation as clearly and accurately as possible. We have extended the public review and comment period. The draft EIR is available for public review and comment through December 16th. We will consider all comments submitted on the draft EIR and we will respond in writing to all substantive comments received during the comment period in the final EIR to help inform decision makers. Public comments are very important to this process. They provide an opportunity to refine the analysis of environmental impacts and develop feasible mitigation. Public comments are the best way to make us, the lead agency, aware of concerns related to the environmental analysis. They are an opportunity to address concerns related to any potential direct or indirect impacts to the physical environment. Effective comments are concise, 
focusing on the environmental analysis and the draft EIR, relate to the project's potential for impacts on the physical environment, identify the specific part of the draft EIR at issue, and include supporting evidence or facts, such as references or citations to specific websites. And uh, now we're back to Pam. Thank you, Carrie. Well, that concludes our presentation. We will now move into the second portion of the meeting and take verbal comments on the draft EIR. As a reminder, you will have three minutes to make your comment and you will only be called on once to make a comment. We would like to hear verbal comments from tribal leadership and local, state, or federal elected officials first. To assist with timing, we will display a countdown timer on the screen. When three minutes have passed, I will give a verbal notice and your mic will be muted shortly after. At the start of your comment, please state your full name for the record. We appreciate your assistance in adhering to the three minute time limit so we can allow as many people as possible to comment. A court reporter is transcribing the verbal comments received today. All substantive comments will be responded to in the final EIR. Please be respectful of everyone who provides comments during today's meeting. You each have a unique and valued perspective and no one comment is considered more important than another. Comments that are directed to or are about another commenter are not in line with the intent of today's meeting and will not be allowed. Finally, any speaker that uses inappropriate language may be placed on mute or removed from the online platform. There may not be enough time to hear from all commenters today. Following this hearing and until December 16th, 2022, comments can be submitted in writing. All comments are weighed equally, whether shared verbally today or sent in an email, letter, or through the website. Comments can be emailed to delta conveyance comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at delta conveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836. Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. We would like to hear verbal comments from tribal leadership and local, state, or federal elected officials first. Please raise your hand now to identify if you are a tribal leader or elected official and wish to make a comment. Thank you. I see that uh, we have one commenter can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Great. Thank you. A good evening. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak on the Delta Tunnels. My name is Nancy Blastos, and I'm an advocate for the no tunnel solution. The Delta was never meant to supply 80% of its water to the, to the industrial farmers who export rice, almonds, avocados, pistachios, grapes, etc., for great profit for themselves. The other 20% goes to water departments who sell water to California residents and commercial industries. I propose repurposing water, catching groundwater, storage, um, runoff water, wherever we can find it. We can we can cleanse contaminated water. We can use it as does the state of Washington has a great program on its own press. We also need to fix residential leaks and commercial leaks and police it fairly. This could provide up to 40% more water. This is conservation and we all need to be mindful of conservation. Our water is disappearing due to global warming and it's, we can no longer waste it because it has been taken by global warming and wasteful use. 
upon reviewing a section of 19 EIR, I learned that the Delta and the water is the origin of Native Americans who worship it. The water is sacred as is the land. It is where terrestrial aquatic plants, fish, animals, and their habitats are part of tribal ecosystem. The area provides views and vistas for tribal culture and ceremony. Even working with tribal leaders, these huge um, monster digging machines could ruin archaeological digs and also loss of artifacts. And inadvertently, and it could damage their culture irreparably. So I hope that um, we can take this into consideration. I don't think the amount of industry that will be produced to get these uh, tunnels set can be um, can be endured by the Delta. And I hope they'll give us more time to study it. And so we can pour over it and get other points of view. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I would like to ask if there are any uh, tribal leadership, local, state, or federal elected officials who would like to make a comment, if they could please raise their hand now. Thank you. Next, we'll turn to our Spanish and Cantonese phone lines to take comments. We'll pause for a few minutes for our interpreters to check with their participants on the phone. Interpreters, when you're ready, please raise your hand if you have any commenters. We're going to take a brief pause now. Thank you all for your patience. At this point, we do not have any commenters who wish to provide comments in Spanish or Cantonese. I will now start calling on people with their hands raised to make a verbal comment. If you would like to make a comment tonight, Please raise your hand using the raise your hand option on the screen or by pressing star nine if you've called into this meeting on your phone. Please remember, we are doing simultaneous interpretation, so please speak slowly and clearly. You will have three minutes to make your comment and you will only be called on once to make a comment. I will go ahead and read the names of our speakers and I'll read the names of the next few speakers who are coming so you'll know when your turn is coming. The first speaker is Regina Chisola. You should get a notice to come off of mute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, sorry, I'm actually calling in from the road because EWR, or there was a meeting in Sacramento I had to go to today, so I'm calling in today. Thanks for having me. My name is Regina Chisola. I am part of Save California Salmon. If there's any point you can't hear me, please let me know. I do not have a good connection. Um, anyway, I'm calling in today from Redding, California, um, from Wintu Land. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, I, I do not support the, the Delta Tunnel, and I'm extremely disappointed by this plan. Um, I feel like, one, a lot of different tribes from the Delta have said that they do not support this plan. They're not okay. Um, they don't give consent and um, don't feel like they've been properly consulted on this plan. Um, I also wanted to say that coming from the North State, our reservoirs are practically empty. And we are having situations where we regularly are having to deal with things like fish kills. And um, I, I think that the North, the water that's coming into the North Delta is critically important to keeping fisheries alive. And it's critically important to dealing with issues like salinity um, for people who rely on local life, water supplies. And um, I think that this plan, especially if we coupled with um, the storage project at Sites Reservoir, will be devastating to salmon fisheries. And I think that the EIR proves this point. And so um, we've been working on this process for a long time could not be more disappointed with the plan that's come up with. It seems like it's just another large water grab from the North State um, to bring more water south. And we're supposed to be making it so there's less reliance on the Delta and on the North State water supplies. And meanwhile, it seems like EWR is willfully not paying attention to the massive fish kills and water quality problems that we're dealing with. And I'm extremely disappointed, as I said, 
And um, I just would like to encourage all of the water savings and um, mitigations to go forward under an old tunnel alternative, which has been asked for again and again. Um, when you came to Reading um, uh, for the scoping hearing, uh, over 200 people from seven different tribes told you that they do not support this plan and asked for a no tunnel alternative and asked for alternatives that do not rely on North State water and taking more waters from our rivers and more extraction from us. And DWR willfully ignored those comments. So it makes me feel like this public process is not genuine. Um, and it makes me feel like the people of the North State have not been heard. And you're just looking to continue to extract at a time when we're having massive fish kills and places like the Sacrament, um, San Francisco Bay. And we need those fisheries to be able to recover. And this plan will make it so they can't. Um, anyway, we're going to be turning in written comments that are um, way more substantive, uh, and we really appreciate everyone being here, and I'm very sorry I had to call in from the road. Please have a nice day. Thank you for your comment. I'm going to read the names of the next several commenters so you'll know when your turn is coming. The next commenters will be Tom Donnelly, David Glosky, and David Armstrong. Tom, you should be receiving a notice to come off mute now. Thank you. Hopefully you can hear me well. I'm yes, Tom Donnelly. I'm the uh, chair of the Planning Commission of Rio Vista, which is on the western edge uh, of the Delta. There's a number of concerns I have uh, with this proposal. Uh, probably the, the greatest one is it really is not uh, much different uh, from what has been proposed uh, previously. But to get specific, you know, about some of the parts of the draft EIR. Uh, one of my big concerns is during the construction period that, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion of how fragile the levee system is uh, uh, in the Delta area and that this is a big motivation behind this project. My concern is, is that with these fragile levees, have the impacts been studied of what boring under them uh, would would do during construction or whether there uh, can be some kind of mitigation or reinforcements uh, along the path that would happen uh, as a result of this because my understanding is the operation of these pouring devices can really kind of recreate um, an earthquake kind of a condition. Um, and related to this is has there been this type of construction that's been done elsewhere under peat bogs, which is kind of the condition uh, that we're, we're dealing with here. So that, that really concludes my uh, uh, one specific statement here. Like I said, I will be submitting others um, as part of the written in process. Thank you. Great, thank you for your comment. The next commenter is David Glosky. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comments today. I'm a retired engineer living on Bethel Island and I had the opportunity to serve on the DCA Stakeholder Engagement Committee and talk with many of the state's Delta experts. My primary comment here today is that I believe this project is too short-sighted as proposed to be asking for the billions of dollars of resources from the people of the state of California. The state's own climate experts indicate that ultimately sea level rise due to climate change will bring high salinity levels to the point where the proposed tunnel draws water from the Delta. At that time, the tunnel will be rendered useless and the Delta will already have become a saltwater marsh affecting local farms, communities, and wildlife. I believe that will happen in the lifetime of my grandchildren. The experts themselves have said to me that in the longer term, the only real solution is to put controllable gates and locks in the two major rivers in the Western Delta to completely mitigate issues related to sea level rise due to climate change. In Appendix 3A, project alternatives are mentioned, including a Western Delta salinity barrier. This alternative did not pass the first round of screening to support a full development of the alternative. The problem is that according to Appendix 3A, the last real work on exploring this alternative was done in 1960. As we all know, technology has dramatically changed since 1960. It's not appropriate to eliminate this alternative based upon the last serious work being done on it over 60 years ago. I have two additional comments regarding the proposed designs and how they relate to the project's stated objective 
to minimize the potential for public health and safety impacts as a result of a major earthquake. I believe any new tunnel design should have the capability to provide fresh water into the South Delta during environmental and structural emergencies. Without this capability, I don't see any benefit to the Delta region itself from the proposed project. The statement in section 3A 4.2 that the dual conveyance Bethany Reservoir alignment would provide the same climate resiliency, seismic resiliency, and water supply reliability as the central and eastern alignment alternatives is simply not true. The Bethany alternative does not have a southern four bay holding water that could be used in emergency situations in the Delta to help control damage due to climate change and seismic activity. I also believe a design change is needed to support the ability for any new pumps in the South Delta to be used completely interchangeably with the existing pumps at the bank's pumping station. I believe it's irresponsible to design a parallel conveyance without this type of complete redundancy. A through delta conveyance should be supported by any new pumps installed, significantly improving operational flexibility, which is a stated objective of the project. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Our next two commenters are Daniel Armstrong and Charles Wilson. Daniel? Hey, how's it going? Uh, Daniel Armstrong, resident of the North Delta, supporter of a no tunnel alternative. Um, the people and ecosystems of California do not need this tunnel project. The Delta Tunnel is a greenwashed infrastructure, infrastructure project that will be the nail in the coffin for threatened anatomous fish species, wildlife, and Delta communities. The state of California has a history of being flat out racist, classist, and anti-environment. This project will primarily be negatively impacting historically disenfranchised Delta communities and ultimately will degrade the quality of life for humans and nature alike. People in urban spaces such as Stockton and along the South Delta will experience an increase in the already growing numbers of harmful algal blooms and degraded water quality. Well, those of us in the North Delta will see a reduction of Sacramento River outflow, rising salinity, and the decimation of Delta heritage communities and the pristine connected ecosystems. Communities such as the towns of Hood, Cortland, Walnut Grove, Clarksburg, Isleton, and Rio Vista will all experience the negative impacts on quality of rural existence. Um, people do not have a need or desire for metric tons of diesel exhaust, endless lines of truck traffic, massive tons of tunnel muck, nor the destruction of natural spaces along the proposed tunnel pumping station sites. Um, in regard to how nature will suffer, we already have seen how the powers that be have handled the Sacramento River during this drought year. The Sacramento River temp Temperature Management Plan and the earlier temporary urgency change petitions all contributed to death of early returning adult Chinook salmon who swam into a Sacramento River system only to die of gill rot, bacterial infections, and low dissolved oxygen due to a river that was averaging around like 75 to 78 degrees um, between like Knight's Landing to Chico recently. Uh, these fish were boiling to death and floating down the river up until about a week ago. This is a harbinger of things to come if a Delta Tunnel plan comes to be. This is an insult to these majestic animals and to all the people connected to the rivers and these animals. By removing an additional 6,000 CFS through a tunnel, we will basically be wiping out the flows of the American and the Feather Rivers. Salt intrusion, rising water temps, and less outflow will ultimately lead to a massively degraded and decimated California Delta and the river systems, and ultimately, the ecosystems and communities that connect to it through the Bay and Pacific. Those who support this project and those who have passively worked on this project basically just stand on the wrong side of history. It really is that black and white. Leave the California Delta to be, and it's not for us to exploit or profit from. Profit-minded individuals have already caused nature and the people connected to this area, and ultimately the state of California enough historical suffering. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Our next few commenters will be Charles Wilson, Elias Garcia, and Nairi Bagdasarian. We'll begin with Charles Wilson. Thank you. Um, my name is Charlie Wilson. I am the executive director of the Southern California Water Coalition. We will too be submitting some more detailed comments, but our comments tonight are gonna focus on three primary themes that are important to the ongoing dialogue and consideration relating to the certification of the IR and advancement of this project. One, the critical need for the Delta conveyance as a climate adaptation uh, strategy, which was described in your presentation tonight. Two, the importance of the Delta conveyance in embracing the commitment to protection and advancement of the human right to water. And third, the value of Delta conveyance to the Southern California and statewide economies. As described between shifting hydrology, warming temperatures, sea level rise, and seismic risk, the proposed Delta conveyance project as we see it is a climate adaptation strategy that is designed to help California address its climate future. 
Capture and conveyance of water in and through the Delta is an important adaptation strategy to mitigate potential water system losses in other areas due to changing precipitation patterns and seasonal runoff. In fact, this is the source water for much of what we're trying to do in Southern California as part of a local supply development. Second, Delta Conveyance embraces the commitment to protection and advancement of the human right to water. Many disadvantaged communities and water ratepayers across California need an affordable high quality water supply, especially as the cost of living continues to escalate and external factors like drought and climate change continue to exacerbate water affordability challenges for millions of Californians. Affordability of reliable water directly impacts our society's quality of life. Water supplies delivered through the State Water Project remain the most affordable option to consumers, especially compared with the development of new local water supply projects. A basis tenet for affordability is to efficiently use existing infrastructure to the greatest extent achievable. Failure to construct the Delta Conveyance Project risks loss of use and underutilization of investments made by taxpayers and ratepayers for the State Water Project for over decades. The Delta Conveyance Project provides important protections as we see it against the potential for public health, safety impacts for Californians, including millions of disadvantaged Californians. Water delivered through the State Water Project also remains the most cost-effective source for Californians and it fuels our state's economy, which is the fifth largest in the world. However, the weakest link uh, in that system is the Sacramento Bay Delta. We see this as important in terms of meeting the 27 million residents of Southern California and meeting their future water needs and the economy for the state of California. In conclusion, there are really kind of some additional areas I'll touch on quickly, and that is the protection of water supply, enabling water supply projects to go forward, facilitating capture and storage, guaranteeing flexibility and improving water quality, all as important tenants that this project helps us to expand and manage for the entire state, not just one region. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Elias Garcia. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Elias Garcia and I represent the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, a longtime supporter uh, of this project. And we're here today just to show our strong support uh, for this much needed Delta Advance project. Um, I think as the presentation showed, uh, this project, which is a long time in the making, um, and, the, and given the current drought conditions, is needed now uh, more than ever. Uh, our region here in Southern California is facing critical water, water shortages if our infrastructure is not modernized. And without action, our water supplies will continue to decrease and our residents will accordingly suffer the consequences. Um, efforts to develop and improve our local water supplies like wastewater recycling, groundwater banking, and desalination uh, do rely on water from the Delta to work. Uh, again, this project has been studied, engineered, re-engineered, and improved over the course of a few decades, and it's very different from the previous conveyance proposals, which again, we previously supported as well. Um, it's been downsized, refined, rerouted, and redesigned to be the right project uh, for California. Uh, our region, Southern California, uh, water security uh, cannot wait. We must act now. Please uh, move this project forward. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Nairi Bagdasarian, Ross, and then Sydney. Nairi? Hi there. Um, thank you. Good evening. My name is Nairi Bagdasarian, and I'm the Director of Public Policy for the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership. We are here in strong support of this plan to protect the reliability of our state and local water supplies by fixing the water distribution network through the Delta. I cannot stress enough how crucial this project is to the San Gabriel Valley and the depth of positive impact it will make. The project will allow storm flows that are currently lost to the Pacific Ocean to be captured and stored in, this, in Southern California for the benefit of the Central Valley in Southern California. That includes the 31 cities that make up the San Gabriel Valley. The release of the EIR documents represents progress in moving the Delta Conveyance Project forward. The Bethany alignment is a step in the right direction. It exemplifies a collective method of pushing forward a project that is sufficient to protect water supplies and an economy that relies on reliable water systems. Investments in our water infrastructure now will 
now will pay dividends in the future, as well as secure our water supplies and protect hundreds of thousands of regional jobs that depend on the stability of this water source. The proposed Delta Conveyance Project will engineer a system that better captures water when it is abundant, so it's available during periods of extreme drought. And we're eager to work with the administration to move forward and see it through completion. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Roz. Hi. I think I unmuted myself. You guys can you hear did. Me? Yes, we can. Hi, Thank you. Paul. Thank you so much. Um, I am a voter in Pleasant Hill. I am a stay-at-home mom, and my family spends so much time on the Delta. That water is our peace. It is our home. We have a boat, and we're so lucky to get to go out at least once a week. The water is really clearly having a hard time. I'm not a scientist. A lot of people have come at this from these specific angles, but like I can say fish need water. And right now the water flows, the water temperatures are not there. We're seeing so many dead fish floating. We're seeing the algae as an issue. It's getting to the point where sometimes it's not physically safe for my children to swim in the water. And that really breaks my heart. It breaks my heart as a voter. It breaks my heart as a long-term resident. It breaks my heart that all of the native tribes up and down the waterways who live in places where these tunnels will be taking water from have said they don't want this project. And, you know, I heard Chief Colleen Sisk speak many times during the run for salmon about the rates of flow and what our winter run salmon need, I think, we can listen to her voice. I mean, she knows the science that they've been using since before time. And I think California is in a space where we need to really begin to make decisions um, together with our original people so we can begin to solve the climate crisis. To me, these tunnels are completely against the direction we should be moving in. and. Um, I just really hope that we can let the Delta be the largest estuary on the West Coast that we don't have to watch it solely become a salt marsh because the water is the most important thing that we all share. And we've made these decisions as California to support agriculture at a level where the money isn't coming back into the state. It's going to specific people's pockets and the water is our commonwealth. That's our greatest riches. And we as California residents, we as California voters, we need to find a way to start to make room at decision-making tables to really follow the lead of tribes and understand that the Delta is sacred water we have created so many issues. So I really hope you can take these ideas to heart and I hope we can um, be on the right side of history. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters are Sydney, Amber, and Katie Wagner. Hi, it's Sydney, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Awesome, thanks for the opportunity to comment. Um, I have major concerns about the Delta Tunnel Project. I'll start with the fact that I've learned that due to the massive construction and the digging of the soil, there's a good chance that communities may experience a disease called valley fever, which has similar symptoms to COVID, but is more deadly. People are going to be getting symptoms thinking it's COVID when it's a disease that's a lot deadlier. I worry that this will potentially cause another pandemic. Also, I am terrified of the fact that due to climate change, scientists predict there will no longer be snow in the 2040s in the Sierra Nevadas and that there will just be rain. I'm also terrified that there might even be less rain. If we have less rain and less snow, how can we guarantee that we're gonna be able to spend tens of billions of dollars and have enough money to bring from the North to Southern California? 
Also, during a time of inflation, we cannot afford to ram through projects that are going to raise people's water rates. We need to invest in projects that are more local and more sustainable. Yes, capturing water is very important, but there are better ways to do that. We must encourage more people to capture water on, in their homes, in rain barrels, or in big trash cans. We must update infrastructure so that buildings can capture rainwater and use it on their land for irrigation. This will put less pressure on the water system as well as capturing rainwater will, will help to put less stress on the sewer system because less water will be flowing into our storm drains and into our sewer systems. I'm also terrified that this tunnel will push a lot more species to extinction. I'm very sad to hear that the Chinook salmon have died off about over 90% and that there are numerous other species that are at threat of extinction. And I am terrified that this is going to affect tribal communities and communities of color the most. We need to save this estuary. We, we need to use our intelligence as humans to try not to dominate so much of the world's resources and so much of mother nature. And we need to just let some places rest and leave them undeveloped so that the water cycle can continue like mother nature meant for it to be. And I encourage that you take into consideration the science and the major concerns that environmentalists have and provide a different alternative that is more sustainable and more reliable instead of the Delta Tunnel. Because it would be awful if tens of billions of dollars went to waste on this project. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters will be Amber, Katie Wagner, and CIEA Climate. Amber? Hi, thank you so much for having this opportunity. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, great. My name is Amber Jamison, and I am the Klamath River Advocate for the Environmental Protection Information Center. I am also the Executive Director for Nature Rights Council, which houses Ancestral Guard, a Native youth-led uh, advocacy organization. I am a supporter of the No Tunnel Alternative, and we do plan to submit substantive comments on the project. Um, I believe that the draft EIR for the Delta Conveyance Project uses models based on over-allocated water rights to analyze the water's, the plan's impacts, which would result in severe environmental consequences. Building more irrigation infrastructure, as the DCP proposes, is not going to fix drought problems in California. Instead, these projects will exacerbate drought conditions and provide more reliance on overabundant water sources that are not going to be available forever. Um, the proposed plan would result in impacts to endangered fish by reducing flows to impaired watersheds, draining estuaries that are essential to healthy river ecosystems, and allowing the continued operation of pumps that will kill fish that are protected under the Endangered Species Act. I propose the conveyance project, um, as proposed, the conveyance project is flawed and should be abandoned or revised to reduce exports that take water out of rivers. It should instead prioritize Delta recovery and improve water conservation, recycling, and stormwater capture measures. Additionally, you can see when you go over Los Angeles and places like that, everybody has a green lawn and a pool. I believe that that's unsustainable at this point in time and that North State water should not be shipped down to Southern California for people to have green lawns. Although it seeks to increase water supply contracts from the Trinity River, the project does not analyze impacts to the Trinity or Lower Klamath because, quote, an initial screening of model outputs suggested detailed biological analysis was not required for the Trinity River system. Based on this statement, it is my assessment that the Delta Conservation Plan or the, the DCP document fails to disclose cumulative effects to the rivers and salmon in the North State. The DCP also contains major flaws resulting in irreversible environmental impacts. The Trinity River and Lower Klamath River are already impaired and regularly faced with massive fish kills like the one we saw earlier this year, where thousands of adult fish washed up on the banks of the Klamath River due to low dissolved oxygen and fish disease. 
I urge you to abandon this project um, and adopt a no tunnel alternative. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters will be Katie Wagner, CIEA Climate, and Gia Moreno. Thank you. This is Katie Wagner. Good evening. I'm from Sierra Club, California, and I'm calling from Los Angeles or occupied Tongva land. I'm hoping that you will consider more seriously the no tunnel alternative. The DEIR even states in chapter 32 that it is what all of the tribes you consulted prefer. You have heard from thousands of Delta residents, tribal members, and ratepayers from around California for years that this is one of the most hated projects in California history. It's Owens Valley 2.0. The state has a track record for passing out TUCPs constantly to the point where they're being audited, so the public has no reason to put any faith in the Little Sip part of the Big Gulp Little Sip plan. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is CIEA Climate. Should be able to come off mute now. Hi, thank you very much. I'm sorry I could not do that very quickly. Um, my name is Sherry Norris. I'm the executive director of the California Indian Environmental Alliance, and we are located physically in the Bay Area in El Cerrito. Um, I, we are not in support of the Bay Delta Conveyance Project. We support the no tunnel alternative. Um, this is a continued um, a continuance of the failed efforts to move water from Northern California um, um, and at the same time support ecosystem health in the Bay Area um, and in the Sacramento River. Um, this project will be at the detriment of local aquatic health of the Sacramento River. Um, Northern California fisheries, Bay Area residents, um, and of course the California Indian tribes who have over and over again said that they are not in support of this project. So to add to uh, many individuals that have spoken against this project earlier, which I agree with those statements that were said, um, I wanted to also remind listeners today and the agency's Department of Water Resources um, and um, the EPA and that the state of California is not respect, respecting the free and prior informed consent of California tribes who have stewarded and relied on the waters of the Delta and the traditional, eaten traditional foods from this region since time immemorial. The uh, bounty that we have in the state of California was um, developed by tribes who worked to make sure that the strongest of the species of fish were able to move through the system. Watching the fish kills that we have seen um, throughout the last um, few decades of my life has been heartbreaking. There's no reason for us to continue to do can, to move forward these failed policies and move water at the time at times when we can see that whether that the growers in the Central Valley are using unsustainable methods for doing this. It's the same and you look in Southern California and you can see full reservoirs and you look in Northern California, empty reservoirs over and over and over again and harmful algal blooms that are taking place along the Sacramento River, the tributaries all through the Bay. We need those flushes of water to keep those fisheries healthy so that we can continue to have traditional foods, not just for tribal individuals, but for the rest of us that are here, it is very important. Why are we spending so much money to destroy a habitat and food sources that should remain in Northern California and we could be exporting and throughout the state, people could be eating healthy foods from Northern California. Instead, we're using healthy, clean water when there's other alternatives that others had spoke about. We will be providing comments, but I also, in closing, I wanna re remind everyone that right now we have the Truth and Healing Council where we're talking about the atrocities that took place in California and the fact that every California native person and native over the United States, we are all survivors. And it is disingenuous with one hand to apologize and the other hand to remove the ability for the people to continue our cultural practices and to continue to survive and continue to help the other residents in California um, to be able to enjoy what California offered and why people first moved here to begin with. There was food, there was water. We cannot continue. Thank you so much. Thank you for okay. your comment. Our next commenter is Gia Moreno. Hi, my name is Gia Moreno. I am a fifth generation Hood resident. Um, I was also on the Delta Stakeholder Engagement Committee. Um, the town of Hood is adamantly no tunnel. Um, I would like to address Section 19, 
where you talk about historical communities and you fail to mention us. Ever since it was um, the Bay Delta plan, um, you didn't even, uh, this DWR didn't have us on the map. You intend fully for us not to exist, for the town of Hood to be completely wiped away. You were talking about a town that is mostly indigenous, Latino, elderly, and low income. You're talking about a town that started in 1860 and you're gonna say it's not historical. This is a town that was in its resurgence in the late forties was built by World War II veterans and their spouses. This is a town full of generations of, of people from, from families that have lived there from their, ki their grandparents, their great grandparents, kids, grandkids, great grandkids. You have failed continuously to heed our input. You have intakes on either side of us. You have no studies about what the impacts of the construction will do to the town. You intend to build this, a road through the back of the town and take out houses. When we've addressed concerns about flooding, where the intakes are and how that is gonna flow back into the town, it wasn't addressed because according to your person who didn't, your engineer who didn't know that it flooded there, that that's not a possibility. You have routinely ignored us because we're poor and we're brown and we're elderly. And that's not fair. There is complete disregard for the Delta as a, a being and is of itself. It is an ecosystem. It is a community. It's full of businesses. And the other towns are, are similar. And you've continued to disregard that. This is a temporary solution that might not even actually be a solution. And you're going to wipe out the entire Delta and a chain reaction is going to flow up and down the Sacramento all the way up to Northern California and down the San Joaquin and wherever the, the rivers that come off of that go to. And there's a disregard for the environmental impact. My grandma said it best and it breaks my heart when she said, I will not be alive when the construction is over but I'll have to live through knowing that everything I've ever known is destroyed. So I would like you to think about that and to think about the town of Hood and to think about the other towns and all of the other indigenous populations up and down the, the, the state who have asked you not to build this project when you continue to force meetings down our throats in secret and when you've completely disregarded the community benefits or the community meetings or the stakeholder engagement comments that have been provided to you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting and we are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and you'd like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Our next commenter will be Brendan Schwartz. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Brendan Schwartz. Um, I'm a voter in Alameda County. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on this subject. Um, but from the little that I have seen um, from the environmentalists that I trust, um, you know, this just seems to me to be another chapter in uh, California's um, exploitative and uh, short-sighted relationship with water. Um, you know, we've never had enough water here to do the things that um, we have done, ultimately, um, and to, to, you know, to experience the kind of growth that we have. Um, <clears throat> And I also want to address, you know, the framing that, of course, people depend, you know, would depend on these uh, sources of water and their reliability. Um, but, you know, that's always going to be the case. Um, and you, you, you may be able to put a bandaid on the present, um, but that's at the expense of killing the future, in my opinion. Um, you know, it, it strikes me very much like trying to build, you know, another lane on a, on a congested highway. Um, it seems like it's going to work and then just more traffic comes. And in this situation, you know, we can always divert more water, but th there has never been an end to that, you know. Um, we just continue to divert more and more water and to destroy more and more of our natural resources. Um, and yeah, we may be able to sustain ourselves for a bit longer, um, but in the future, I mean, it's gonna come back to bite us. Um, and I think that's really sad that, um, that we'll sell ourselves out that way. 
Um, so that's, uh, that's all for me. Um, I obviously am opposed for, uh, to the tunnel. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter, I apologize, as a reminder, you all can uh, mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to delta conveyance comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at delta conveyance project.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 942836. Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Our next commenter will be Billy Trice Jr. Um, Billy, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties here. We're gonna see if we can resolve that and then we will work to um, allow you to come off of mute in just a minute. For the other participants tonight, I do wanna remind you that we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on the phone and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember, that you can make one verbal comment tonight. While we work to resolve those issues for Billy, our next commenter will be Albert. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Albert Medvitz. I'm a rancher and farmer in uh, Rio Vista uh, on the banks of the Sacramento River. Uh, we currently are experiencing salinity problems with the river. Uh, as are many, uh, and I'm sure those issues have been addressed by others. I would like to provide some data and information about some of the earlier comments. Uh, I am a former academic uh, and I'm also a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And uh, so I published uh, a, a work with Al Sokolow at UC Davis uh, back in the 1990s called California Farmland and the Urban Pressures. And one of the issues that is crucial is population growth. I would like to put some numbers to that. At the time, uh, in the piece that I wrote, uh, we predicted, or projected, not predicted, we projected that by the end of this century, there would be roughly 100 million people in California. There would be more farmland, or there would be more urban land than there is farmland in current growth rates. Those rates have slowed down a little bit. We are now at about 1%, which means that our population will double in about 70 years. That means by the end of the century, we'll be close to 80 million. This project was established when there are roughly half the people in the state that there are now. And it is now the state water project and the, uh, the, the federal project are far beyond their capacity. It is a failing infrastructure and it was a mistake. It is a mistake in terms of its origins and its uh, consequences. The original notion of taking water from Northern California and exporting it to Southern California was articulated in the 1870s by a fellow named B.S. Alexander, who was the first uh, commander of the Corps of Engineers. And at the direction of Ulysses S. Grant, he conducted a study and came with the conclusion that the way to develop California was to take water from the north and to the south. It is a 19th century concept at a time when the ideas of manifest destiny, of unrestrained growth, and uh, 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 a total irresponsibility about the environment were current. It is not appropriate for the 21st century 
It is a mistake to be abandoned and we should look to a future with no more exports south. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Billy Trice Jr., I am noting that the version of Zoom you're using is uh, one that I'm not able to get you off of mute. So I'd like to ask that um, perhaps you consider calling in. The call-in number that you can use is 1-833-548-0282. And that webinar ID will be 848 848- Six one four nine four zero six two. The last information you'll need is the passcode, and that's zero two seven four seven two. We also dropped that information to you so that you could um, use it in the chat to to uh, log in. At this point, I'd like to check in with the translators to see if there are any individuals in the interpretation rooms that have questions that they would like to raise at this point. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or if you called in by phone, press star nine, and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Our next commenter is Asha Miserve. Good evening, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can, thank you. Thanks. Uh, my name is Osha Miserve, and I represent local agencies of the North Delta, and I've been working with various community groups and local agencies over the course of the last 14 years regarding proposals to divert Sacramento River water into two and now one tunnel. Um, really doesn't make a difference whether it's one or two tunnel, and this isn't a compromise uh, deal here, but rather than, I think the main thing I want to comment on tonight, because we will be working on written comments for the various um, groups with which I work, is that I want to make clear that the format of this meeting is not a public meeting. This does not substitute for public meetings regarding this project. Um, Usually we would have a public meeting in person where there would be materials and storyboards and information or even in a charrette um, way, I've seen planners do it, where people could actually find out about the project and ask um, planners and consultants questions about it and have um, an interaction about it. And what's happening here is it's a Zoom meeting. I can't see who's here. I can't even see the name of the speaker. And indeed, when I'm looking at the um, screen right now, it just says public comment. It doesn't even include my name, which I believe I do have my name in my profile. And it, and it's, it doesn't make a public meeting when you have um, this type of format. I understand that we've been in a challenge with the COVID situation um, and we wanna make sure that people are safe. But I think that we've, turned a corner in that situation where there would be a way to have a public meeting that would actually allow people to learn about the details of the project and also to see who else is interested in concern. And when you block off all that information and you don't show the names and you don't show the faces and then you don't even allow the chat, that's not a public meeting. So um, I just wanna be very clear that this does not substitute for having those public meetings. I think that some have asked that, uh, especially with the fact that the comment period is now a little bit longer, we still don't think it's long enough to read all the documents or even try to understand it, especially when there's no real public meetings where um, we can get um, information about this massive project that is larger than really anything that's probably been built in our lifetimes in California. Um, prior to the construction of the initial um, state water project um, in the 60s and 50s. So um, yeah, I'm very dissatisfied with this format. And I would say to anyone who's on the line or on the phone that um, I encourage you to 
submit your written comments and reach out to all your elected officials, whether they be at the local or the state or the federal level and let them know about your concerns because we need representation to make sure that this project never goes through. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you are on a phone and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Our next commenter is Carol Foote. There, is that okay? That works, thank you. Thank you. Um, I am a Delta resident and um, my concerns have been expressed by a lot of other people. I um, also would be for a no tunnel alternative. I think the current project is extremely short-sighted. It um, assumes that the supply of water from the, from the mountains and the Sacramento source is unlimited. I think that's unrealistic. Um, I believe demand is going to grow and that we would be better off investing our monies in um, more sustainable solutions. But my biggest concern is the destruction of the ecosystem of the estuary, that's the, the Delta area. Um, I don't think we probably have any idea just how important this is to the larger ecosystem. I know it's a major migratory path for birds and for fish. Um, and I'm concerned about the salinity has been expressed and how that could destroy the area, not to mention what the construction might do to it. Um, to me, this area is so precious that it really should be some kind of a <laughs> national heritage site. And to me, uh, destroying it this way would be like uh, trying to blow up El Capitan for gravel or cut down the giant redwoods to build homes. And um, I just think that it's, it is not consistent with the direction that we as a, a human population want to go. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you are on a phone and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Our next commenter is Tara. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, thank you. My name's Tara Beeman and I live in Hood and um, it's a pretty wonderful place to live at the moment. <laughs> we're pretty concerned if this actually happens and we're surrounded by, you know, heavy construction for 10 or 20 years. That doesn't sound very good, but um, I just wanted to uh, read something that's important to me about living in this area and living next to, to the Delta and to Stone Lakes Wildlife Refuge. So I'm just reading a, a little bit from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and it's about fully protected animals. Um, and it says the classification of fully protected was the state's initial effort in the 1960s to identify and provide additional protection to those animals that were rare or faced possible extinction. 
lists were created for fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Please note that the most fully protected species have also been listed as threatened or endangered species under the more recent California Endangered Species Act. And um, I found that there are a few that are low, uh, fully protected species in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. And one of the most famous, of course, is the, is the, are the Sandhill Cranes. And I was reading in the draft, um, the Delta Conveyance Project Draft EIR, and it's figure 13G um, 1A. It says greater and lesser Sandhill Crane sound level impacts medium term pile driving and heavy construction. And this is shown throughout the foraging habit, habitat of for the sandhill cranes, that this activity, medium term pile driving and heavy construction will be happening if the project goes through, which I, I'm against the project um, because I think it would just cause too much damage to, we just don't have enough water besides that um, already because the waters, the waters in the area are filling up with toxic algaes and it's, and fish are dying off and it's kind of a mess. But um, then it also says um, in the draft, it, it is assumed that noise from the construction of water conveyance facilities could temporarily displace Sandhill Crane use of habitat in the vicinity of project activities. And then I just um, wanted to say that fr from the older project, the two tunnel, which I think is still true, um, the, the regional EPA administrator, Jared Blumenfeld, he was the administrator, um, we are at three minutes. If I could oh, ask you just to, to wrap up. Thank oh, you. Okay. Okay. It's just said it would contribute to increased and persistent violations of water quality standards in the Delta. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 730 PM to continue to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting and we are not going to present any new or additional information. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you were on a phone and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to delta conveyance comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at delta conveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 94. 2836 Sacramento, California 94236 0001. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7 30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we're in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you are on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Our next commenter is a call-in commenter of the last 
uh, digits are 5930. You should receive a notification to press star six to unmute your line. Hello? Yes, hi. Hello? Yes, we okay, can hear hi. you. Uh, my name's Ken. Fine, thank you. Uh, my name's Ken Sanford. Um, I'm a Southern California resident, and uh, I, I do have a comment on the, uh, <clears throat> the, the EIR. Uh, going through the uh, EIR, the, the seismic summary goes into great detail concerning all the studies and uh, assessments that have been reviewed and created uh, and the probability of this or that seismic activity affecting the project. Uh, of concern to me is the uh, acknowledgement of the potential for soil liquefaction of the levees that make up much of the containment for the delta waters. I've not found any significant discussion of what can be or will be proposed to mitigate this condition. California is known for earthquakes, of course, and we report <clears throat> and the report cites studies that forecast a major event somewhere in the, in the state in the future over the next 30 or 50 years. Of course, we don't know what that major event might consist of or where it would be. But uh, after all, what if after all this work and expense, a major quake causes great damage to the uh, a major canal or causes a rupture in uh, several levees? Uh, the delta is essentially below sea level, and the sea levels are rising in 10, 20 years. They may be 8 inches, 10 inches higher than they are right now. But any significant levee failure would cause a, a tremendous uh, rush of salt water into the delta. And uh, this would degrade all the fresh water in the delta and render uh, it unusable for municipal or agricultural use. Uh, this is the prime selling point for this tunnel project, that they're gonna bring some of this great Northern California water down to the South Delta and then ship it in the canal down to Southern California. But if the Delta fills up with salt water, Everything's gone out the out the window. Uh, another thought is we spend all this money and time effort to uh, create this tunnel, which I believe has a dubious future. And uh, are we going to have the time, the money, the, the the effort to really go after things that we can do right now, meaning uh, recovery of uh, existing water sources in the Southern California, and. Uh, that kind of, uh, that's a very big concern to me that we get distracted with this big project that I'm sure construction companies are really looking forward to it. Uh, lots of money will be made by a lot of people. People will have jobs for 10 years or so. But uh, in the long run, what are we going to end up with? And I, I think that a better source of uh, spending our dollars and our time and our effort would be to look locally to develop sources for storing water, recovering water and uh, try to reduce our current needs or what we can perceive as our need. And I'm guilty as anybody else in Southern California. I have a swimming pool. I don't have a lawn, but uh, I use a lot of water and I prob probably more than I should. But thank you. And that's the end of my comment. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we're in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you are on the phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember, you can make one verbal comment tonight. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 9428362. Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. 
We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you are on the phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com and comments can be mailed to DWR Attention, Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember you can make one verbal comment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember you can make one verbal comment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember you can make one verbal comment tonight. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 9428. 36, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment tonight. We will be here until 7.30 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we're in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not gonna present any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on a phone and would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember you can make one verbal comment tonight. It is 7.30 p.m. and this virtual public hearing will conclude. If you did not make a verbal comment, there are several other ways to provide comments before the close of the comment period on December 16th. 
Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 9428. 36, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your input and involvement in this process. If you need further assistance, please visit the website or contact us at Delta Conveyance at water.ca.gov or 1-866-924-9955. This hearing is adjourned.